discussing images and inverse images. Now it's important to understand that when discussing functions, we have notation for talking about an element of the domain, say x, and its corresponding element in the codomain, which we write f of x. Now it's really important to understand that f of x is not a function. It's an output. It's specifically the output that we get when we plug in the element x. And so you might ask, well then, what is a function? If f of x is not a function, what's the function? Well, the function is called f. f is the name of the function. And f of x is the output of the function when we plug in x into the function f. So that's an important side note. So x is the input and f of x is the corresponding output, which by the way, we call the image of x. Sometimes we will want to talk about all the elements that are images of some subset of the domain instead of the elements that are images of the entire domain, which we've called the range. It would also be nice to start with some element of the codomain, say y, and talk about which element or elements, if any, from the domain it is the image of. So we might be interested in what is mapped to y, if anything, or maybe multiple things are mapped to y. We could write those those x in the domain such that f of x equals y. But this is a lot of writing. <laughs> Here is some notation to make our lives a little bit easier. To address the first situation, what we are after is a way to describe the set of images of elements in some subset of the domain. So suppose f is a function from x to y, capital X because it's a set, capital Y because y is a set, is a function that um, has a subset A in x, and could be that A is all of X. We will use the notation. I'm going to erase this real quick so we can talk, talk about the notation more, more clearly. So here's some notation. F of A. Keep in mind, A is a set. Denotes the image of A under F. So this is the image of A under F. Namely, the set of elements in Y that are the image of elements from A. Which means that F of A, in terms of set notation, is the set of all outputs where f of a is in y, such that a is an element of capital A. So that is the set notation um, for representing the image of a under f. Now we can do this in the other direction as well. We might ask which elements of the domain get mapped to a particular set in the codomain. So again, we're gonna talk about um, function f, which sends x to y. But we're also going to, instead of talking about a subset of X, we're actually going to be talking in this case about a subset of Y. We'll call B. So B is a subset of the codomain. Then we write F inverse B for the inverse image of B under F. So this is the inverse image. of B under F. But again, this is still using words. Let's use some set notation here. 
So uh, keep in mind, this is the set of elements in X whose image are elements in B. In other words, F inverse of B equals the set of all X in X such that F of X is in B. Often we are interested in the elements whose image is a particular element y in the codomain. The notation here works like so. So instead of f inverse b, we would write f inverse of y. Specifically, we might write f inverse of the set y to be more precise. This is the set of all elements in the domain that f sends to y. Now, it makes sense to think of this as a set. There might not be anything sent to y if y is not even in the range, in which case f inverse of y would technically equal the empty set, but those are not really interesting scenarios. So, or F might send multiple elements to Y if Y, if F is not injective or one-to-one. -one. Now, as a notational convenience, we usually drop the set braces around the Y. Now, you notice when I wrote this, I actually originally wrote just F inverse of Y. And this is actually how most people write F inverse Y instead for this set. Here's a big warning though. F inverse Y is not an input. It's not an input. F of X is an output. That is an output. But F inverse of Y is not an input. F inverse Y is a set of inputs because it might be that F inverse doesn't even exist which we'll go through an example in a moment here. Inverse functions only exist for bijections, but F inverse Y is defined for any function F. Now here's the point. F inverse Y is a set, not an element of the domain. So F inverse Y is not an element in X because F inverse Y is a subset of X. Now, this is just sloppy notation um, for, to use curly braces. So we are just going to write F inverse Y um, to mean the complete inverse image of Y under F. It is not the image of Y under F inverse since the function F inverse might not exist. So let me be clear. There are functions that have no inverses, but all functions have inverse images regardless of whether or not there is an inverse function. Let's do an example together to make this a little bit more clear. I have a problem that I kept here. Let me make this larger. All right, so consider the function g from z to z, the integers to the integers, defined by g of n equals n squared plus one. Find g of one and g of the set one, containing the elements one, then find g inverse of 1, g inverse of 2, and g inverse of 3. Okay, so you might wonder what the heck is the difference between these two things. I mean, g of 1 is an output, so it is an element, it is a thing, and it's exactly what we get when we plug in 1 into this function here, n squared plus 1, which is uh, 2. So g of 1 is 2. G of one is not a set. It is an element of the codomain. Technically, it's an element of the range. But what about G of the set containing the element one? What is that? Well, this is a set. When you put a set into the in where the input goes, you can assume that G of that set is a set as well. And so this is the set containing the element two. 
It's really, really important to understand the difference between two and the set containing two. One of them is a number, the other one is a collection. There is a technical difference and this difference is so important throughout this course. All right, let's keep going. Let's talk about G inverse of one. Now you might say, but G inverse doesn't exist. In fact, N squared plus one is not a function that is one to one, meaning you can't find the inverse. And you're right, there is no inverse function for this, um, specifically in the case where you're sending the integers to the integers. So G inverse does not exist. However, G inverse of one does exist because this is the same thing as writing G inverse of the set one. And in this case, the question is, what elements of the domain map to the outputs one? Well, I believe n equals zero works, and I think n equals zero is the only element in the domain that has one as the image. So if you plug in zero into the function, you get one, and I believe zero is the only input from the domain that you can plug into the function to get an output of one. And so g inverse one is not zero. It's really important to understand, g inverse of one is not zero. It's the set containing the element zero. And to really emphasize why this is important, let's talk about g inverse of two, which is a collection of elements in the domain that map to the element two in the range. So what can map to two? Well, there are two answers here, plus or minus one. And so this is the set, negative one and one. Those two elements in my collection are mapped to the element two in the range. And so again, G inverse of two is a, um, is a set. And similarly, G inverse of three. This one is important. You might say that the answer is negative square root of two and positive square root of two. But that's actually not true. In this specific scenario, the reason is because those two inputs are not in the domain. The domain only consists of integers. And so technically, neither of these are inputs in our domain. And so technically, nothing gets mapped to three. So this is the empty set. It's a little tricky, but it's important to understand those tricks and to understand exactly how this notation works so that you get a better understanding of function notation, at least in this course. Anyways, thanks everyone, and I'll see you in the next video.